Hey folks, today we are planting a cover crop. And so we're gonna go over what to use, how to think about it, because this is really important, and then how to put it in, some things to consider, and uh, what species, consider your environment, all this kind of stuff. It's basically gonna give you a full mental understanding of how cover crops work and uh, how you can create your own cover crop mix. All right, so you can see right behind me, I've got my chicken tractor. So I am building a cover crop for my chickens to eat. So my first question is, can my chickens eat this? Now I'm a seed hoarder, so I'm gonna go inside and we're gonna start looking at seeds that we can uh, use. And so I've probably got all the seeds I need. Um, if you don't, you can do some research about chickens and blah, 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 whatever, if that's what you're doing. And then you can order your own seed. But I've got a ton of seed already because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> And uh, we're just going to use what we've got. Alright, we're at the kitchen table with all of our seeds. <laughs> and there's three basic plant types I want in my cover crop. And that's a legume, which is the bean family. Just think anything that's a bean. Soybeans, black eyed peas, um, lentils. These are all beans. So I want beans in there. I want some grasses. And that's kind of a hard one because it's like, man, we don't really naturally just have grass seed. But I ordered a bag of black oats. That's one of the few things that I did order specifically for a cover crop. So in my environment, black oats are a great grass. And then you, of course, want broad leaves, which are anything lettuce, collard greens, um, spinach, chia, whatever. It really doesn't matter too much what it is just if you're not sure if your chickens eat it try feeding them some they probably will eat it most things are not poisonous to chickens and um, I've never ever had a chicken die from eating something poisonous and I've had chickens at free range now of course you don't want to grow a cover crop of only poisonous stuff and put them on there because that's all they're gonna eat obviously that's a dumb idea so if you follow these guidelines you will have success okay so i forgot to uh hit record when i started doing all this all right basically we got arugula we got lettuce in here we've got um, more lettuce and then we've got some lentils in here as well as black beans and there's some soybean in there so we've got three different kinds of legumes the lentil soybean and black eyed peas um, We've got a bunch of greens. We even put an acorn uh, squash seed in there. Yeah, there's some right there. That's acorn squash. And then um, I'm, I've actually got some Everglades tomatoes. And what I noticed is the chickens really like the, uh, the tomatoes. I mean, they love tomatoes. So I throw some every so often in there. So I'm gonna just, that's gonna be plenty of seed to get mixed in. And then, um, oh, I've got, collard greens right in this sack and I man I picked these I harvested these three two or three years ago and um, I have not noticed any drop in germination so that's that's excellent and then um, what, do we, what else do we have here oh here we go some daikon seed that I collected and um, I don't want to put all of it in there, but I'm definitely going to at least put a pinch in there. And I'm just looking at the seed and pretty much just eyeballing like how much I'm going to want in in a certain area. So the quantities uh, for the area are totally eyeballed. And this is some cucumber that are pink. I don't know why. they. Some kind of coating, maybe it helps germination. I don't know. <clears throat> but here's some more cucumber that is not pink. And the most important ingredient here in my grass uh, is going to be black oats. So there's some of that. And then um, we'll just kind of mix that around. Oh, I dropped some here. That's funny seeing that pink in there. But there's my uh, cover crop seed mix for chickens. Really, a lot of the stuff you can get from the store. You could you could make a cover crop entirely from store-bought 
uh, seeds, you know, like like these came off the shelf of a, of a grocery store. So you could go to the grocery store and do your whole cover crop with just seeds from the grocery store. You don't have to get a big old bag of caustic black oats like this. Um, but that is, that is helpful. And you could even use bird seed if, if it comes down to it, if you've got some. There's definitely some grass seeds in there. So let's get outside and go over how we're gonna plant this stuff. All right guys, we got our mix out here. The, uh, the chickens are right back here and let's check out what they've done. So I ran my chickens all along this strip right here. Hey guys. And um, they have done an absolute bang up job just destroying everything that's green. <laughs> and so now I have basically a clear open space to plant a cover crop in. And the reason I'm doing this is to produce food a variety of nutrients for them and um, just basically so I don't have to feed them as much so I can put these in the ground and produce way more food than what is just right here for my chickens so the way I think about these seeds right here is they are the instructions to produce more food and so each one has their own uh, DNA instructions and as they germinate and grow and collect carbon out of the air and nutrients from the soil and water and nitrogen, all these things, all these ingredients for chicken food, um, they can be sitting there for a time in the soil to produce all that for me. And uh, it's a way to save money. It's a way to get your chickens more nutritious food. And there's a, there's a lot of value in growing your chicken food where the chickens are rather than growing it halfway across the country, turning it into pellets and shipping it all the way over here. So this is a cover crop I've actually already planted. It is a sweet potato. And it puts on a lot of new growth. It's very vigorous. And if my chickens take this down to the ground, it will naturally re-sprout. Now it won't do that over the winter, but during the warm season, these sweet potatoes are gonna keep on coming back. And these are a very nutritious green for chickens. All right, so how do we know if chickens like sweet potato? Uh, we just stick some in and uh, if they eat it, they like it. And chickens are pretty good at determining what's good to eat and uh, what's not. So obviously they like it <laughs> and I will just let them have it. Okay, so before you plant your seeds, you want to look at the weather. You really want to plant these right before a good rain. So look at the weather forecast. If there's rain in the forecast, start throwing seed. Otherwise, if there's no rain, you need to have some way to water them. And so I've got, you know, a sprinkler right there. And so I can just turn on the well pump and, and it rains. All right, so it is literally as simple as getting a handful and just shaking it out and giving it a little toss. That's how easy it is. And with my chickens, I like to make sure there's a little carbon on the ground, so leaves. In this case, there's a lot of pine needles. And um, you can see that they've, here, let's toss that. I wanna show you something. You can see like it's pretty fluffy and uh, they've really broken it down quite a bit. And they've really uh, just trampled and scratched and done a bunch of stuff to these leaves. Cause before, you know, it looked like that. There's a nice leaf litter there. But uh, now it's just really well turned and mixed. And that's important for it to be loose because as it rains, it's gonna be moving this around and actually end up burying some of these seeds. Not all of them, of course. And if you want, you can come out with a stick or whatever and just poke you know, some of these larger seeds into the ground like the uh, black-eyed peas and uh, some of these squash seeds. But uh, at the end of the day, um, just throw a lot of seed out there. Uh, most of them, a lot of them are gonna take root and germinate and grow into plants. That's pretty fun too. I like it. It's very relaxing. Hmm. All right, so now that I've got my cover crop down, I'm gonna come over here and turn on the sprinkler. And I have a rain gauge within the range of this irrigation. 
And so I usually let it rain about a quarter to a half an inch. Hey yo, there we go. Oh, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Oh, I stepped on the hose. <laughs> and bonus, my garden is getting some rain as well. So it's really nice to uh, pay attention to the area that one of these sprinklers will cover and kind of design everything around that. And the chickens will like it because this ground will get cooled off. So there you go. Alright folks, so it's really that simple. Just get some seeds together, put them on the ground, get some water on them, and go. Uh, this isn't a scientific exact measurements kind of deal. No, you don't want to deal with that. That's there's Nature is way too complex to get it down to a science. It's it's a feel, it's an intuition that is developed. I didn't just like one day figure this out. I started throwing seeds on the ground, is what I did. And I threw a bunch of different ones and I noticed what actually came up, what didn't. And I still experiment every single time I throw a seed on the ground, it's a new experiment. And so you just have to start doing stuff. Stop watching YouTube videos, except for mine of course, you know, like and subscribe and all that. But Start doing stuff, start putting seeds in the ground, and figuring it out. It's something you have to figure out for your context. Because my backyard, maybe it's pretty close, and that's great, but your context may be totally different. So uh, I want to teach things that are specific to my context, but also I want to teach how I'm arriving at these conclusions, or start why I'm starting in this place or that place, or whatever. So you can uh, do these same things for yourself. For example, I put in oats. This is not something I want to plant in the spring. It doesn't do well in the heat, it does well in the cool. So it'll pop up and then as fall comes in and winter, it will persist through the winter. I know this, well, you can read the label, but also through experience. That's what I did last year. I saw the oats do amazing. And so I'm throwing oats again. If they didn't do good, I've been like, screw it, never using those again. Anyway, it is blazing hot. It's already in the 90s today, which is also why I need to run the sprinkler just to cool my garden off because this is the time of the day where the sun just blasts my garden. Look at that poor droopy stuff. Mm. So you guys have a great day. Put some seeds in the ground. I'm serious. And uh, have fun. Bye.